One of the hardest things with studio lighting when you first get started is recognizing when the light is not so good. Like I remember in the beginning, you know, I get my studio light set up and I was just happy to get something that was even close to correctly exposed. Like that was exciting to me, but we're going to go far beyond that. And so I want to take some time for us to go through the 10 most common lighting problems, the ones that I see over and over again, popping up in people's photos. Now, the idea behind this is if you can imagine these 10 common problems, you can train your eye to identify the problems and then fix them right then and there on your shoot before it's too late. So I actually think after you watch this video, what you should do is you should go back over your old photograph and see if you can identify some of these common problems. So see what you're doing most often that's quote unquote wrong and then try to fix it. Don't get me wrong though, rules can be broken. And, but I, I think most of the time in the beginning, when there's a problem, it's usually on accident. You can tell it's on accident and it detracts from the photograph. You might look at an issue of Vogue and you go, oh, that's a problem. But if it looks like it's on purpose, you can get away with it. So these mistakes, I'm not saying they'll necessarily destroy your photo or destroy your lighting, but if you recognize them and fix them, this is giving you more control in the studio. So let's take a moment to train our eyes. Main light too low. Watch for your main light being a bit too low. When the main light is low, typically it makes a person's face look wider, a little bit heavier, and the shadows are unflattering. Like they just they look weird. So take a look at an example of this. In the first photograph, you can see that the shadows are actually cast upwards. That's what I recommend you check first to see if you have this problem. Check the nose shadow. Is it angled up or is it angled down? And you can also see the problem in the catch lights. Catch light in this situation is actually at the bottom of the eye. And so in this first photo, I can tell that the light is too low. It's probably lower than eye level or even the middle of her face. So depending on how low that light is, at some point it actually is from directly below and becomes monster light, which is the least flattering light out there. In the next photo, we have a better angle of light. Look at the nose shadows. You can see that they're pointed downward, not to the side. And then those catch lights, they're in the top of the eye. The light here is much more flattering to her face. You can see that. Look at the cheekbones and the jawline. They're more carved out. I find that this problem often exists with people who have lower ceilings and they're, therefore their lights are a little bit lower or they were photographing someone that was sitting and then they go to standing, but they didn't adjust the angle of the light. Main light too high. We just talked about the main light being a little bit too low, but you can also go the other extreme and have your main light too high. Now the dead giveaway is deadness in the eyes, no catch lights, dark shadows, you get something that's called the sculling effect. The head actually looks like a skull. And this means that the angle of light is too high above the subject's face. Now they could also move their chin downwards, which will have a similar effect. Uh, so let's take a look at a photo of a perfect example of this. This light is not flattering. There's no catch lights. There's big bags under the eyes, deep shadows in the eyes. It's just dead. And another thing I'm also not a fan of, just another note is see the shadow from the nose, how it meets the lips. You can actually see this in this photo. It's not that it's the worst thing in the world, but it's not really flattering. So watch out when the shadow from the nose is too long. All right, so let's see a correction of this problem. In the next photo, the height of the light has been lowered just a bit, not huge, but the results are drastic. Now I don't have deep shadows in the eyes. We have our catch lights back. Even the texture of the skin is better because when you put that light so high, what it does is it rakes across the skin and it emphasizes blemish and skin texture. And so just lowering it a little bit makes all the difference. Now, remember this situation could be caused by putting the light too high or the subject could actually lower their chin too much, or they could go from sitting to standing. It, like, there's a lot of different things. You just have to watch out for it. 